Hello and welcome to chapter 8.4 from Stevens' Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do book. In this chapter we're going to talk about hypothesis tests about a mean, but in this case we're talking about the unusual situation in which we know sigma. And sigma is the population standard deviation. All right. And I say that's unusual because if we're trying to test a claim about the population mean, it's highly unlikely that we're going to know the population standard deviation. And so that's why I consider this section um, optional. It's sort of decent for demonstrating how to do a hypothesis test, but in practice you would seldom find yourself doing this. Um, but let's continue. Um, in this case, we're testing a claim about a population mean mu in the unlikely event that we know the population standard deviation sigma. So here's an example, preliminary example. It has been reported that the mean head circumference of adult males is 59.90 with a standard deviation of 1.7 centimeters. Right? Um, so that's all adult males. In a study involving 63 randomly selected male college students, the mean head circumference was 55.12. Right. At the 0.05 significance level, test the claim that the male college students have smaller heads than the average adult male. Assume the population standard deviation for all male college students is the same as for adult males in general. So basically we're saying we know sigma and it is 1.7. Uh, requirements, we need sample data be, to be coming from a simple random sample. We need to know sigma. And we need either n to be 30 or the population is known to be normally distributed. Um, again, or both, just in case that's not implied there. Uh, the test statistic is right here. It's just the number of standard deviations from the sample distribution of the mean that the sample mean is above or below the the population mean. Um, so what this has, x bar is the sample mean right there. Mu is the population mean assumed in the null hypothesis. Sigma is the population standard deviation that we now know. And n is the sample size. We have critical values. There are also z-scores just as in 8.2. We have z sub alpha when we are denoting one tailed critical values and z sub alpha over 2 um, when we're denoting two tailed critical values. And there's two of them. Okay, the process is identical to the last two sections. We determine the null and alternate. The null will always look like this. It'll have a mu because we're talking about a population mean equals and then that'll be some value. Alternate, you'll have a, you can have a left tail test, two tail test, sorry, left tail test, right tail test, two tail test. Right. Calculate the test statistic using equation 8.4 above. And then again, in this case, we actually can do both of these because getting p-values from the z table is, is um, quite easy. So the critical value method, we reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is in the rejection region. Or we reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is smaller than the significance level, right? That alpha is the significance level. And then we're going to make an understandable conclusion. All right, so back to our first example. It has been reported about the head circumference of adult males. So that's the 55.9, right? And we have... Um, with standard deviation 1.7, we have a sample of size 63 male college students. Their mean head circumference from the sample is 55.12. At the 0.05 significance level, test the claim that the male college students have smaller heads than the average adult male. And assume the population standard deviation for all male college students is the same for adult males. So what we're saying is sigma is known and it equals 1.7. So we're claiming here that the mean head circumference of all male 
college students. That should be male, not mall. <laughs> is less than the circumference for males in general, the 55.12. Right. The null hypothesis gets the equal sign. The alternate supports the claim because it can while remaining different from the null. All right. So you have our claim, null, alternate, the test statistic comes from this formula. The sample mean is 55.12, right? That's from our sample mean, randomly selected male college students. The mean head circumference was 55.12. The mean from the null hypothesis comes from right there, all right? The population standard deviation, which is assumed to be 1.7, divided by the square root of n. When you do that, you get a test statistic, z sub x bar, equal to negative 3.64. That's pretty extreme, so we're looking pretty good for our claim. Um, so let's, what do we do about the null hypothesis? Do we reject or fail to reject? First, doing the critical value method. We need to put 0.05 in the left tail, or you can use the small table below it, so we'll just do that. 0.05 left tail test. Well, let me go full screen. 0.05 left tail test. Let's see what we got. Point oh five left tail test, negative 1.645 is the critical value. value negative 1.645 so that determines my rejection region my test statistic was negative 3 something right it was uh, negative 3.64 so if you look at that that's way over here that's in the rejection region so we reject the null hypothesis you can also look for the p-value if you look for negative 3.64 in the z-table this area to the left gives you the probability of getting a z-score below that. And when you look for negative 3.64 in the z-table, what you find is you're, you're in this category here. It's below negative 3.5, so you use an area of 0 0.0001. All right, so that's really small certainly smaller than alpha, so again we reject the null hypothesis. So that's good for us. Here's our alternate. It supports the claim. We're rejecting the null hypothesis. That means we support the claim. So things are looking good for the claim. The sample data supports the claim that male college students have a mean head circumference below the mean for adult males. Good. All right, let's do the your turn problem. We have a speed limit monitoring device. That's one of those things you drive by and it flashes how fast you're going. Um, so I sit on the side of the road and I watch it. 40, 40 cars go by. The mean from those 40 cars is 31.1. We'll assume the population standard deviation somehow or another. I know it, and it's 5. Use a .05 significance level to test the claim that the mean speed of all drivers on West Street is more than 5 miles an hour above the posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour. Okay, so I have a mean for my sample. So X bar is 31.1. Sigma, the population mean, is 5. Somehow I knew that. And so what I'm doing is I'm making a claim about the mean speed of all cars. So I'm going to let mu represent the mean speed of all cars. I'm saying that it's more than 5 miles an hour above the posted speed limit of 25. So what I'm claiming is that the mean speed is greater than 30. The null gets the equal to sign. The alternate supports the claim if it can while remaining different from the null, and it does. There's my test statistic, x bar, 31.1. Mu from the null hypothesis, right there, it's 30. 
There's my population standard deviation sample size. So I get 1.39 is my test statistic. That's not very big. Things are looking a little risky for my, for my claim. This is a right tail test. It's at the 0.05 significance level. So when we go to my Z table, right tail test, 0.05 significance level, 1.645. That is my critical value. So my critical value is 1.645. My rejection region is everything to the right. My test statistic is over here somewhere. It is not in the rejection region. Fail to reject the null hypothesis. You can also do the p-value method if you look at the 1.39, which is the test statistic. The p-value is this area in here. It's the probability of getting a more extreme z-score assuming the null hypothesis is true. So if I look up 1.39 in my table, i got to go to the positives. 1.39, looks like I'm at 9, or 0 0.9177. 0 0.9177, but that's this area to the left, right? So I have to subtract that from 1 to get 0 0.0823, that p-value is greater than the significance level, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Well, that's not good. Look, here's our, our null is that the mean speed equals 30, and I can't reject it, so I can't support my claim that it's bigger than 30. Right. So there's not enough data to support the claim that the mean speed on West Street is greater than 5 miles an hour over the posted speed limit. All right, so that wraps up chapter 8.4. I'll do the summary worksheet next. Hopefully see you then. And bye-bye. Um,